Far from the vast expanses of the Alaskan bush, away from the solitude of pesky Mother Nature, can be found a group, folks that have had a hard time being defined. And after painstaking research, this is their story. Much like Jane Goodall in Tanzania or Margaret Mead in Samoa, I carefully approached and recorded and documented their habitat. The habitat of urban campers. After I was accepted into the clan, I discovered who their leader was by watching his interaction with others and his apparent status. He was the one with the coffee, and his name is Tim. I asked him, who are these inhabitants, or at the very least, who does everyone else think they are? With uh, the mentally ill and homeless and newly released people from prison, also if you're in uh, the foster care system, there's no housing program, and, and they're on the street too. As Tim was answering my questions, non-urban campers, or home dwellers, with their annoying electricity and heat, strolled by and simply rolled their eyes at the encampment. Urban camping requires specific skills only developed through experience. Sign-making skills are abundant, however their sign-securing skills certainly need some enhancement. Staking a tent into concrete is impossible without a jackhammer, so the urban camper simply loads all of their belongings into the tent to secure it. At least the urban camper has sensible footwear, and if not, an outfitter is located across the street, most likely next to a Starbucks. There is no zoning for the urban camper, either. This camp is unmistakably in a floodplain. And the only thing separating these brave urban campers from certain death by Buick is a concrete curb. I also found in my research that this encampment was where the group gathered during the day, or what could be considered the downtown camp. I was told there was another camp a few blocks away where the group would sleep, then travel to the downtown camp. In essence, they were urban camping commuters. Fascinating. After entering this camp, I again witnessed the skills the urban camper has and the ones where he is considerably insufficient. They had constructed a not-so-safe looking, not to mention noticeably asymmetrical, igloo where they had nicely laid their American flag for easy access. The location of the commuter urban camp was obviously selected because it was the site of what appears to be ancient igloo remains. Ironically, near the actual igloo is an igloo cooler. Coincidence? I think not. The clever urban camper will also bring not only one, but two file cabinets to ensure the safekeeping of urban camper documents to take to the downtown encampment. Keeping warm in the frigid Alaskan winter can be accomplished with the urban camp stove. This should be placed in the center of camp to keep all residents equally warm. And if the urban camper has the resources, he can simply check into the Marriott down the street. This resourceful urban camper's sign-making skills can be seen on the side of his tent, which eliminates the skill required to secure the sign. Good thinking, urban camper! Many questions arose during my hour of diligent research. The message emblazoned on the urban camp tent is the First Amendment, which in part says that as Americans we have the right to peaceably assemble. Is urban camping the same as peaceably assembling? What's the difference between urban camping and simply being homeless? Can the homeless urban camp if they just make a sign? So what's to come for the urban camper? Who knows, urban camping may become all the rage with urban encampments coming to a park or a street corner near you. I just want to know, do they have to pay for parking? Oh.